Ko Ngāti Awa, te toki, te tangatanga i te rā, te ngohi-ngohi i te wai. E te kākā kura, e te kai ngārahu e wira, tēnei mātou e muri-muri aroha tūnei. Oki-oki mārire mai e tā i te aunga o te moe. Kei ngā kanohi ora o te motu, rarau mai rā. Welcome to the Hui Māori Current Affairs for all New Zealanders. E taro ake nei. It's the number one issue for Māori, and it's set to get worse. It's a struggle for everybody, not, not just for beneficiaries or, you know, people in low incomes. I see people with an income that's decent enough still struggling. We talked to whānau unable to keep up with the cost of living. You're stuck in a place of survival. How are we supposed to get better when we're just trying to live day by day? It doesn't make sense. Ko hinga te tōtara. We discuss Tāwira Gardner's legacy. Then, he's Kawirau's king of the Pauaka Whakata. I hope to bring back some of, the, some of the most iconic New Zealand-made programmes like Sail of the Century, Wheel of Fortune. And a television trivia, Aficionado. While TV3, New Zealand's first private television network, began transmission on the 26th of November 1989, it started at 8pm with a two-hour grand preview. Oh, well, that's a blooper. Can we do that again, please, Dean? No worries. We meet autistic savant Patrick Tippo. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Tahuti mai. A kai on the table and a roof overhead. It's a modest expectation, but for many whānau, these basic necessities of life are out of reach. While the government has made inroads addressing poverty, rising inflation is expected to push more whānau below the breadline. John Boynton headed to Porirua to see how whānau there are coping with the cost of living. Porirua, father of four paura hekenui, tries his best to feed his daughter's growing curiosity. Look. Well. Yeah. What is it? It's an airplane. Oh, this dude. But just keeping food on the table and a roof over their head is a struggle, with Paula living in and out of emergency housing. So how many emergency houses have you been in? I've been in three emergency houses over the last three months. He's on a benefit and can't afford to rent a place of his own. And the rising cost of living is making it even harder to provide for his whānau. And so we're going to go home soon, though, OK? I do worry often. It's, it's almost a, a daily thing. You're having to worry about where you're going to stay the next day. And when you've got young children, it's not a good feeling. It's like a mana thing, you know? You feel like you're incapable of being able to provide. A Horizon research poll commissioned by the Hui reveals the cost of living is the issue Māori are most concerned about. And with near record rates of inflation dominating the headlines... Skyrocketing inflation rates are back. Annual inflation is the highest it's been since June 1990. It's a situation that's only becoming worse. This month, the government took urgent action, dropping petrol tax. In this unprecedented move, the reduction of 25 cents a litre is us making sure that we are responding quickly to the pain at the pump. Next month, the minimum wage will rise to $21.20, and benefits will also rise by $15 a week. It's taken you so long to admit we have a cost of living crisis. I've always acknowledged that families have been experiencing pain as a result of the changes to the cost of living. So the inflation that people are talking about, that's a kind of a measure of what everyday living costs and what changes have occurred. Māori economic policy advisor Will Workman is tracking inflation rates closely. Costs went up for our everyday things like food and petrol by just under 6%. Okay, so for the last decade, it's only been rising by about 2%. So it's a massive shift, and, and I think we'll all notice it um, when we buy petrol or go to the supermarket. In the latest food price index, the cost of fruit and veggies led the price hike at the supermarket, increasing by 15%. And petrol prices rose 30% within the last year. Rental prices also went up by 5.5%. Porirua was recently named the country's most expensive rental market, with median rents topping $700 per week. 
but it's not a new title. It's one Porirua has held for the last two years. And as inflation soars, whānau here have been crippled by the cost of living. And our low wage economy only makes it harder. So when I was working, I was probably getting about 800, 900 in my hand. I worked out if I was to get my own place just for a two bedroom unit, you're looking at five, six hundred dollars. While inflation goes up, our income stays the same. And it's a struggle for everybody, not, not just for beneficiaries or, you know, people in low incomes. I, I see people with an income that's decent enough still struggling. So more people coming through the door? Definitely more people now than ever, than we've ever had, I think. Jessica Te Huia was born and raised in nearby Cannons Creek and now manages social housing for the community organisation, the Porirua Whānau Centre. We hear all this talk about record rates of inflation, but what does that look like here on the ground in Porirua? We've probably had more um, interactions with Oranga Tamariki. Because there's a lot more family harm, there's a lot more notifications going to Oranga Tamariki, and so we're busy trying to juggle supporting whānau with every, their everyday struggles, as well as keep their tamariki in their home or with their whānau, and, it just, yeah, at the moment it seems like a never-ending battle. The Fano Centre offers a range of social and housing support, all with a Fano centric and holistic focus. You've got Fano that are struggling through the same battles and with all the anxiety and the mamai that they carry and the trauma that they've been through. Because uh, we do get people that just feel lost. They come and they go, oh, there's just no way out. Come back to your breath. Recently, wellbeing classes were launched as one way to help Fano manage their mental health. Oh, and then slowly, slowly walk back up. Well, we've got a lot of Fano harm, family harm going on because Fano can't afford the normal cost of day-to-day -day living, which is causing a lot of depression, anxiety. Yeah, our Fano are really struggling, and now we're getting more calls for um, food parcels. We don't actually offer food parcels, so we go and we outsource. So Jessica and her kaimahi are making more trips to their local food bank, Kiwi Community Assistance. So we get a lot of kai from here for our whānau. We get lots of milk. Sometimes we'll get big parcels of kai and we'll make them up and send them out to our whānau. Today, Jessica is delivering kai to whānau in need. We've got some milk for you. Oh, cool. Do you want some? Yeah. yeah. Jessica says having to provide the basics to Fano is a sign of the times we're living in. All right, you have a lovely weekend. Yes, yeah, to you. Bye. Bye. We shouldn't have to provide Fano with the necessities. You know, they should be able to um, get them themselves, but, you know, we know that they can't. And they aren't just providing kai. When Janelle Edwards ran into trouble, he reached out to Jessica's team for help. I didn't know he'd see Tunti because I've got no family down here for support. And um, so I ended up uh, contacting the Purirua Whānau Centre and they offered me a job and that's how I become the groundsman for the social housing service that, they, that they, they do. A job which is giving him a chance to stay out of the justice system and an income to live on. And I just do what I can do and I do my, try to do my best at being the, the best you know, father to my son and role model and father figure, you know, stuff like that. Janelle grew up in a gang whānau and lived in poverty. It's a cycle he wants to break for his son. We want them to be lawyers, we want them to be famous basketball players or something like that, eh? You know, stuff, good stuff, eh? No, not, not gang members, eh? Does it concern you that this could be his future, you know, living in a society that is unaffordable? Yeah, yes, yeah. Because you know, there's a big wide world out there, but there's also a lot of trouble that comes with it. And you know, a lot of stuff like expensive living and all that. With inflation predicted to keep climbing, the future is looking tough. We hear that inflation is going to keep rising to record rates till the middle of next year. How worse can it get for, for whānau? Yeah, well, well, how long's a piece of string? At, at the moment, 6% is nearly the highest it's ever been in one year. I think in 1989, it was 8%. And so what happens is um, people still need to buy food, so they do, but they defer their other spending. Anything they can defer their will, they stop buying insurance. And they stop maintaining things like their cars. So, you know, that's the cycle that we need to avoid. That's the real risk of high inflation for Māori more than others. 
They go too fast, you might fall off. Paura Hekenui and his daughter will be in an emergency hotel room for the next 12 weeks, a cycle many whānau feel is impossible to break. The situation that we've been put in is, doesn't allow for growth. We're stuck in a place of survival. How are we supposed to get better when we're just trying to live day by day? It doesn't make sense. As a kaimahi who works on the ground, what are some of the solutions you think will make a difference? Well, I think instead of giving uh, motels all this money, give the whānau more money so they can afford the, the, the private homes, give them more money and benefits or, or, or working for families so that they can afford to support their whānau and can afford to feed them and pay bills. <laughs> because she wants whānau like the Hekenui's to have a safe place to land. <laughs> Nā John Boynton, tērā pūrongo. Kia mau tonu mai rā te titiro. A koe nei, ka matapake hea e pēne henare, te mahi nui a Tawira Gartner. He rārangi maunga ka tū te ao, he rārangi tangata ka heke ka ngaro. Koe nei ngā kupu poroporo aki a Penny Henare mō te matenga ururo o tā Wira Gardner. He served as a soldier for his country and a leader to his people. Sir Wira passed away last week and is being remembered as the embodiment of service leadership and a man who got things done. Joining us now to reflect on his legacy is Fanonga, friend and Defence Minister Penny Henare Tenakwe. What will you remember about Tawira Gardner? Oh. Uh, I will remember most fondly his direct nature. In a conversation with him recently, uh, he talked about how his time in the army taught him how to decipher uh, through much of the rubbish and to cut to the chase and. Uh, certainly in my time with him, uh, he's always presented himself that way. And that's been probably one of the biggest lessons uh, that I'll remember from a man who was uh, larger than life. Most people uh, relate you to Ngāpuhi and Ngāti Hine, but uh, you have um, 
you have whakapapa there with the whakatohia and you're actually quite closely related to Tawira, is that right? Correct. Uh, Tawira was my grand-uncle uh, through our Ngāti Rua whakatohia side on the marae at Omarumutu. We come from the same whānau, the Papuni whānau, and uh, uh, you could imagine my surprise as I arrived at our family reunion about a decade ago now. Uh, and he was there, and I've known him all my life, but didn't know that he, uh, we were connected through our whakatohia, whakapapa. Uh, so it was really nice to make that connection. He has a long uh, service record in terms of public, uh, you know, working for the public, and um, you and I would remember him from rolling out the fiscal envelope back in 1995, and many times, for, for Tawira though, it didn't matter which government was in power, he would work for either and he'd just get the job done. What were some of the, some of the things you remember about his contribution? Uh, look, I'll, I'll give two very quick stories. The first one was uh, when the Māori Affairs Department was broken up. Uh, some will recall that there was the Iwi Transition Agency or an agency called Te Tira Ahu Iwi, of which Sir Wira was its leader. Um, this was the precursor to Te Puni Kōkiri. Uh, and of course, um, my father was a regional manager for Te Tira Ahu, Te Tira Ahu Iwi. Uh, and at one particular meeting, I remember sitting there as a child listening to these people talk about what the challenges were here in Tāmaki Makoto, um, and they couldn't agree. Uh, so Sir Wida challenged my father to an arm wrestle, uh, and that's how they solved the matter. Needless to say, uh, Sir Wida won, and my father always said that uh, it was career limiting to beat your boss in an arm wrestle. Uh, so that was one story, and of course the other one is the one that you've mentioned uh, uh, to Ahine, and that is his contribution in taking around the fiscal envelope to this country. Regardless of the hue of government, he was always about our people first and, and in presenting uh, the fiscal envelope to our people you'll recall the many challenges he had right up and down the country and uh, the one I remember fondly is of course the one in Waitangi uh, where we ended up cancelling all of the celebrations that year because of the protest due to the fiscal envelope uh, but despite that Sir Weta did it with um, a great sense of dignity and mana uh, and I'm proud of uh, what I had seen and worked with alongside him uh, in the public sector, and I'm sure he'll be missed. No um, tangi, no fast donations. He w he wanted to St John's um, ambulance, and he wanted to protect public health. As a minister, uh, as the associate minister of health, you know, how did you? What was your reaction to that? Our uh, first, like I'm sure many Maori and Fano across the country, uh, we're deeply saddened that we couldn't fare well a rangatira like this, like we normally would, but we respected his wishes. And for those who don't know, throughout the entire pandemic, uh, Sir Wira Gardner has been a close advisor and confidant of mine as we've continued to make decisions to keep our whānau safe. So after the shock of not being able to mourn him appropriately, um, of course, uh, mana to the end, and uh, we respect his wishes. Kia ora. Uh, just before you go, I want to quickly pop a question in. The Māori Party is calling for uh, the GST to be removed from Kai. Are you a supporter of that? Uh, no, not right now. And the reason I say that is um, it's quite clear that it's not as easy as they make it out to be to remove uh, GST from Kai. Um, the government's already moved to cut petrol, uh, and of course we have heard the public transport announcement. But we acknowledge times are tough out there and we'll continue to monitor and do what we can to make sure we can ease that burden for our people. Even kai off some of, uh, GST removed off some of the kai, like fruit and veggies, is that an option? It's not an option for us right now and so we're just, that's not, that's not on the table for us and the Prime Minister's made that clear. So you're off to Fiji and then on to Australia for some bilateral visits. Uh, to strengthen, it says, the uh, defence cooperation, you'll be meeting with, uh, up with the Defence Minister Peter Dutton, who's infam uh, infamously described deporte uh, deportees, 501s, as um, taking out the trash. I guess, how does cooperation look like with somebody like Minister Dutton? Uh, look, um, this will be our first face-to-face -face meeting, but um, I've met with him on a number of occasions online and, and even t uh, communications via text. And look, I find him for our roles in defence to be really uh, a good person to work with, a good person to talk to. Uh, and I know that the matter that you've raised was something that has been dealt with by our Prime Minister and their Prime Minister directly. So the defence matters at hand, I'm sure Minister Dutton and I will get along. 
Tēnā koe e te tūngane ngā mihi nui ki a koe i whai wā ki te kōrero mō tā wera. Kia tātou kato, kia ora. Kia ora tūhine, kia ora tātou. After the break, we meet the autistic savant who's a walking Wikipedia of television trivia. Auraki mai anō. Savant syndrome is a rare condition in which a person with developmental disorders has an amazing ability or talent. For 32-year-old Patrick Tepo, that talent is television trivia. Tepo, who has autism, is a walking Wikipedia on the topic of television. Rawani Pereira went to meet the Kawero local with remarkable recall. Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh... Well, that's a blooper. Can we do that again, please, Dean? No worries. 32-year-old Patrick Depoe knows a lot about TV. When television started, it was based in Auckland. Which is surprising, since he actually doesn't watch much of it. What do you think it is about television that you absolutely love? Providing an escape from everyday life. Are we, are we still filming? Hi there. For Patrick, what's on the box is a full-time obsession. Are you an autistic savant? Yes, I am an autistic savant. Yeah. Autistic savants exhibit exceptional skill or brilliance in a particular area. It's a rare and special talent that affects one in a million people. And Patrick's speciality is TV. Now, we hear that you love television. Right. Now, what do you know about the hui? Um, doing very well, and um, it's been on for seven years, and it's hosted by Mihi Forbes. Fantastic, cool. Let's talk television. Okay, <laughs> shall do. And in the short time we spent with Patrick, we got to witness his uncanny, encyclopedic knowledge of television trivia. While TV3, New Zealand's first private television network, began transmission on the. 
26th of November 1989. It started at 8 p.m. with a two-hour grand preview. It's remarkable Patrick knows this because he was barely a month old when TV3 launched. Good evening. An Auckland man is... In First it was Philip Sherry. Then came uh, Joanna Paul because um, when um, Philip Sherry left the network because of bad ratings. He wasn't even born when this British soap first screened. My favourite show is um, Coronation Street. Well, Coronation Street happens to be one of my favourite shows, so I know a little bit about it as well. But can you tell me who plays Bet Lynch? Uh, played by Julie Goodyear. Uh, she was with um, Coronation Street for 25 years, 1970 to 1995. And about seven years later, Bet um, returned to, to the cobbles of Britain's favourite street. Can you tell me where the, the fascination with television, where, was, where do you think that came from? To be honest, I don't know. Patrick and his mum, May Tepo, share a unique bond. What do you know about your mother? Um, because I'm... Um, because you're very special to me. And you know what I love about you? What? You what? never judge people. Mm -hmm. You will go in there and help anyone. Mm -hmm. Their closeness is forged in the struggles of a single parent raising a child with undiagnosed, complex needs. I'll tell you what, there were some dark times. He wasn't sleeping normally. One hour a night, that was enough for him. So I had to end up locking ourselves in the house. Um, when I went to sleep, I would tie a rope around my foot to his foot so I could feel him moving, or he would get out. I was tired. I was really, really tired. I wanted to find him dead. I, that sounds wrong for a mother, but that... Oh, my God, I'm tearing up now. But that's how tired I felt. And so all the while you're knowing that there's something not right, but are you getting any answers? No, you've got to remember, this is back in the day where autism wasn't talked about, didn't know about it. It wasn't spoken about. Um, I was called a bad mother. I was told I should put him in a, a mental home because there's something not right with him. Yeah, it was hard, but we continued. And because I kept on seeing little sparks, oh my God, sparks in my son's eyes, you know, so I continued. Finally, at age three, a child psychiatrist diagnosed Patrick with autism a life-changing moment for a mum desperate for answers. It, it gave me something to go research and look at. He is the only one that actually listened to me and he told me it's not my fault. And that's the first time I ever heard that from anyone, you know? Patrick has lived all his life in Kawaro in the Bay of Plenty. He makes the most of his limited independence and for exercise visits the local pools for a swim. So, since you were diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic, staying healthy is really important for you? Mm -hmm. And I try to, uh, to do at least uh, between 20 and 50 laps. Although it's very hard, but I'm try tr I, gave it a I give it a best shot. Autistic savants can be overwhelmed with feelings of anxiety and struggle with communication and social interactions. But Patrick never tires of talking TV. You've got another talent that we discovered while filming this story about TV themes. Um, yeah? Yeah. Okay, shall I start? Okay. Making a way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your, your worries sure would help a lot. Cheers, and it ran for 11 years. 28 awards from over 100 nominations, and one heck of a hell over. Oh, sorry, hang on, sorry. We'll start that again. Can we start that again, Dean? Yep. Sometimes, Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Oh, uh, Cheers ran for 11 years. 28 Emmy Awards from over 100, 100 nominations and one heck of a hangover. <laughs> I see what you did there. Superior Memory Recall is an autistic savant superpower. 
regular day transmission started at 7 a.m. with the early bird show. Patrick committing decades of television listings to memory. And the first evening bulletin started at 6 o'clock. Philip Sherry, who died recently. Is it that you read it first and then that sticks in your brain? Just read it first and put that in my, put that in my brain. And he plans to put his TV knowledge to good use because Patrick has big ambitions. PTV, Network New Zealand. And that's, that's the trade name for Patrick Tipo Enterprises Limited. You've created your own TV channel. What do you want to do with it? Well, if PTV Network becomes a reality, I hope to bring back some of the, some of the most iconic New Zealand-made programmes like Sale of the Century, Wheel of Fortune. You're not so keen on reality TV. Why is that? Because, um, in, in my opinion, many New Zealanders choose to not choose to watch, choose not to watch television because reality television is all rubbish. Patrick's devotion to TV is only rivalled by the aroha of his whānau. He's surrounded by a loving family who are proud of all he's achieved. May's advice to parents of autistic children is to not be afraid to get the support they need. It's going to be long and hard, but keep on going. The rewards are endless. Do you want to cuddle and give me a kiss and a hug? <laughs> I love you, my darling. Come on, Okay. And it's only fitting that the last word on this story goes to Patrick. And that's a wrap. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Awesome. Yeah. You're awesome. Pai te waiata, koe kei a koe Patrick na Rawani Pereira tera purongo. Hey nga, wiki e heke mai nei he kau papa tua finua. It's the town where locals can't sit a driving test. How on earth did they think our kids were going to get licences? Leaving rangatahi in Wairoa high and dry. It floors me that they could have just so easily taken away something that was really important. And setting them up for failure. You know, their first offence is probably a driving uh, offence because they've got no licence, and then that, it just go, it spirals downhill from there. We meet the folks driving the kids of Wairoa to get licensed. Kohikina te hui mo tēneira no horumaira. Nā te puna whakatongarewa te hui i tautoko.